Assalamu alaikum. Uh, root locus is the part followed by closed loop uh, holes as we change uh, the gain of uh, the system. Uh, in the last lecture, we learned that any point in S plane which satisfies the angle condition is uh, uh, a closed loop pole, can be a closed loop pole and lies on the root locus. In today's lecture, we shall talk about a few rules which help us to sketch the root locus for a system. So the first rule uh, from the last lecture is the real axis rule. Uh, so this rule states that uh, the part of real axis to the right of which there are odd number of poles and zeros, uh, that part of real axis will be a part of root locus. Uh, the next rule is a symmetry. That is the root locus is symmetrical about horizontal axis. We remember the example from the last lecture. We had uh, this uh, transfer function k over s s plus 10. So the root locus for this particular system looked like this one. So the shape of this root locus is symmetrical about this horizontal axis. Whatever is the shape below this axis, the same is the shape above the uh, this uh, axis. Because the poles uh, uh, of real system, if they are complex, they always exist in pairs. That is, if there is a pole over here, then there must exist a pole. These always exist in conjugate. Therefore, this uh, is symmetrical about horizontal axis. The third rule is uh, root locus starts at, uh, in, at poles and ends at zeros. Uh, root locus always begins at poles. These poles can be either finite pole and they can lie at infinity uh, and ends at zeros. Again, zeros can be finite or, uh, at infinity. What do we mean by finite poles and uh, poles at infinity and likewise zeros? Uh, again, we consider this transfer function. So, where are the zeros for this system? Uh, we do not have any finite zero. However, there exist zeros at infinity. Zero is the value of s which makes this transfer function to be equal to zero. So if we substitute this s to be equal to infinity uh, or this s to be equal to infinity, this transfer function will be zero. That is, the, there are two zeros of this transfer function at infinity. So when uh, in this rule we talk about the poles and zeros, they may lie at uh, some finite location or they may also lie at infinity. Again, remember the root locus for the same system. Uh, it was of this shape. It it started from the poles and terminated at zeros since zeros were at infinity so this graph extends up to infinity uh, another example to demonstrate it this rule uh, consider again uh, the this transfer function uh, a closed loop system with a forward transfer function given by uh, we have this transfer function we locate the uh, poles and zeros of this system in S plane. A pole is at S equal to minus 1. Another pole is at equal to minus 2. 0 is at S equal to minus 3. And another 0 at S equal to minus 4. By applying the real axis rule, uh, we have uh, this is part of a root locus, this part of real axis. This part of real axis is also part of root locus. The root locus will start from the poles and terminate at zeros. So a rough sketch, very rough sketch of root locus is root locus will uh, starting from this zero will finally uh, starting from this pole will finally approach uh, some path will follow some path and finally approach the zeros. Since this root locus is symmetrical about horizontal axis, whatever is the shape above this axis, the same same shape will be below this axis. So the root locus which started from these poles will ultimately reach the zeros. Uh, in this particular example, the zeros were 
at some finite position therefore the root locus uh, approached this uh, position if the zeros are somewhere at infinity the root locus will approach infinity so we remember from this rule that uh, root locus starting from the poles will finally reach zeros zeros may lie at infinity so in approaching the zeros at infinity the root locus will follow some asymptotic lines and number of these asymptotic lines that is how many asymptotic lines are there number of asymptotic lines that is equal to number of finite poles minus number of finite zeros and uh, how to draw these asymptotic lines root locus which emerge from the poles will terminate the zeros uh, the zeros which are at infinity the root locus will follow the asymptotic lines to approach those zeros so how to draw these lines you remember that you can draw a line if you have uh, for example information about uh, a point and slope of that line if you have information about one point of that line and slope of that line then you can draw uh, that line so here is uh, uh, the uh, the expression which can be utilized to determine the angle of those asymptotic lines once we have asymptotic lines then we shall be able to sketch the root locus the center of these asymptotic lines that is a point on this asymptotic line is given by sum of finite poles finite poles minus sum of finite zeros all zeros uh, which are finite divided by number of finite poles and number of finite zeros this uh, sigma a is called center of asymptotic line this is a point uh, which will help us to draw these asymptotic lines so center of asymptotic line can be determined by this expression and the angle of those asymptotic lines denoted by theta a is given by 2l plus 1 multiplied by 180 degrees and this uh, uh, plus minus whole divided by number of finite poles minus number of finite zeros so how this uh, third rule will help us to sketch the root locus we again demonstrate it with the help of uh, examples uh, we have uh, this system unity feedback uh, closed loop system and we want to sketch root locus for it uh, for that purpose we locate the open loop poles and zeros of this system there is a pole at origin another pole at s equal to minus one another pole at s equal to minus two uh, and a zero at s equal to minus three and fourth pole at s equal to minus 4. To construct the root locus we first apply the real axis rule. By real axis rule uh, we see that this is part of root locus because to the right of all these points there are odd number of poles and zeros. Uh, this part of the real axis is not part of root locus because to the right of this, all these points there are even number of poles and then this is also part of root locus. What about this part? So to the right of this, there are uh, four is the number of poles and zeros. So this is not part of root locus. And again, uh, uh, to the right of all these points, uh, there are odd number of poles and zeros. Therefore, this is part of root locus. And uh, we also know that root locus starts from uh, poles and terminates at zeros and in approaching the zeros uh, it follows the asymptotic lines and where is number of asymptotic lines so the number of asymptotic lines 
is equal to number of finite poles minus number of finite zeros. Here we have four poles, finite poles and one finite zero. So there will be three asymptotic lines. To draw a line, we need a point uh, on that line and slope of that line. So the point uh, of those lines, which is called center of asymptotic lines, is equal to sum of finite poles, which in this case, we have one pole at uh, origin, another pole at minus one, another pole at minus two, another pole at minus four. So sum of finite poles minus sum of finite zeros, there is a zero at minus three divided by number of finite poles, which is four minus number of finite zeros, which is one. So this uh, is equal to minus uh, 3 minus uh, 7 plus uh, uh, 3 is minus 4 minus 4 by 3. So this is a point and the angle of asymptotic lines that is given by 2L plus 1 into 180 degrees uh, both plus and negative divided by number of finite poles minus number of finite zeros uh, where l is an integer starting from zero up to any number any integer so it is equal to 180 2l plus 1 multiplied by 180 degrees divided by 3 if we substitute l equal to 0 we get uh, plus 60 degrees and minus 60 degrees if we substitute L equal to 1, we have uh, 180 degrees, which is also minus 180 degrees. So whatever you like. If you substitute L equal to 2, then you will again have the same angles. So you have three asymptotic lines and angle of those asymptotic lines is plus minus 60 degrees and 180 degrees. So let's first sketch the asymptotic lines. So center of asymptotic line is minus 4 by 3, minus 4 by 3 is somewhere here and then we have a line with plus 60 degree, so plus 60 degree, here I sketch it very roughly, uh, on the graph paper you can plot it rather correctly, even if you have uh, geometrical tools then you can uh, plot it correctly on a simple paper. So this is uh, an asymptotic line with angle of 60 degree. This is asymptotic line with an angle of minus 60 degree and another asymptotic line with an angle of 180 degrees. Remember that this is, these asymptotic lines are not the root locus. These only help us to sketch the root locus. Root locus will start from the poles, finite poles and will terminate at zeros and uh, uh, in uh, approaching the zeros it will follow some asymptotic lines. So root locus which started from this pole and this pole cannot terminate over here. It will have to approach these asymptotic lines. So I very roughly sketch it. Uh, it will start from uh, the poles and emerge from this real axis and finally become uh, parallel to these asymptotic lines. So root locus started from these poles follow, uh, follow these asymptotic lines to approach uh, zeros at infinity. Root locus which started from this pole uh, has terminated at this finite zero and this root locus starting from this pole will terminate at zero which is in, at infinity and in approaching the zero at infinity it will follow the asymptotic line. So this is the third asymptotic line and this root locus which started from this pole uh, we, it will approach to zero at infinity following uh, uh, this asymptotic line. So this is a rough sketch of root locus for this particular system. We can even refine uh, this plot by computing a few more details. That is here I had roughly sketched this point this, uh, in the next lecture we shall learn how to correctly determine this point. 
This point is called break away point. How to correctly determine this point? Likewise, uh, here, what is this exact point? This can also be determined and we shall learn it in the next lecture inshallah.